Indians have another great problem and that is prepositions because prepositions also create a problem. I would recommend for students who are appearing for competitive exams to make out a list of all verbs, all adjectives and all you know nouns which have specific prepositions of their own. There are other prepositions also like time always has prepositions of their own place and position have prepositions on their own. So, take a book or take your computer and make a long list of thousands of words you know in English and the preposition which they follow. Then you check up your dictionary, is this the preposition for this word? Then you are safe. You can learn like that. No grammar book will tell you all the prepositions, you have to work it yourself. Look at your uh, screen which says, she is proud about her new house, she is proud about her result. Many things we hear all the time, we do not say proud about. Proud is an adjective which always takes the preposition of. So, we say she is proud of her result, she is proud of her success, she is proud of her house, we are proud of our performance, always proud of. So, when we listed the adjectives, we found that proud has of, whenever you use proud, you can use that. Very many people say, I congratulate you for your success, that is not correct. We always congratulate on. So, everybody congratulated me on my success, I congratulate you on your success. Congratulation, congratulate, congratulated, all these words take the preposition on. Similarly, look at the second sentence, which is mistake. Jump is a verb of movement, all verbs of movement take a preposition of movement. If you say he jumped in the pond, that is a static verb. I say he is already in the pond, he is swimming in the pond, he is you know standing in the pond, correct. But jump means point 1 to point 2, there is movement. So, jumped into the pond, that difference of preposition with the movement. Sometimes mistakes are also there for misplaced modifiers. A modifier is adjective or adverb. Now, look at the sentence which is on your screen. The lesson has only 5 exercises, that is the correct form, but very often only is put in, in front. It says the lesson only has 5 exercises, that means you are changing the meaning by changing a simple word. If it says that the lesson has only 5 exercises, that means you wanted more, the number of exercises you wanted were more. Therefore, you have to be very careful in the use of modifiers. Very often it so happens that corrections in competitive exams give questions like this. Now, there are certain slides of pronunciation, punctuation and uh, spelling which I do not think we will be able to do now. An important question which comes in the examination also is the vocabulary. So, different types of vocabulary forms are there. The first example which I have given you on the screen which you can see is the words which are often misused, the word affect and the word effect, the word p o u r and p o r e both are pronounced in the same way. Similarly, whole then beside and besides, then alter and alter, allowed and allowed. These are also words which are pronounced similarly, but they have a completely different meaning. The best way for you to learn this meaning would be that you make sentences and you show the difference. For instance, a l t e r and a l t a r. I can tell you the one sentence with each. You have to alter this exercise, that means change. So, if one exercise you have done, I say you please change it. So, I am using the word a l t e r, alter, change. But if you change the e into a, a l t a r, it is the place of worship. You know, in the puja room, we have a open place, a place where we put the gods, that is the altar. In the church, you have a big place, you know, where 
the figures of Christ or the Mother Mary you find that is the altar with a T A R. So, everybody is worshipping at the altar we say that means they are paying their respect to God. This is the way in which the words although they appear similar very often confused you have to choose. In the examination they might give you both and they might ask you to choose one. The next point in vocabulary is redundancy that means explanation. You know suppose this uh, here is the college is like giving directions. You are looking for a specific college then that specific college requires a specific article. I explained to you that the article the is for specific purposes. Suppose you are looking for a particular college then somebody is telling you here is the college that means they are pointing out to a specific college which you are looking for. Now, suppose that person also does not know then he will say suppose you say I want to look for one specific name of college then that person might find out because that person also does not know then they say here is a college that means you are using indefinite article that means I am not sure whether this is the college you are looking for that is one meaning which comes. Suppose you say here is college the sentence is completely wrong because you have asked for a specific college you have not asked for a college as a concept where the college is a concept giving education there alone the college can be without an article that is what we call a zero article. When you say how much have you studied then answer can be given up to college that means you have studied either UG or PG courses there you are using the word college for a concept that is the reason why you have to remember that unless you know the meaning of the sentence grammar can never be learnt in individual sentences. We are teaching in our schools and colleges in individual sentences. I also gave you so many examples in individual sentences, but this process is completely the wrong process of teaching grammar. Yeah, This was a very good question which we were asked just now which I replied to. I think if all our future teachers and our students start thinking like this you know they analyze each sentence in their life the English will become very good. But let me tell you one thing that by learning English let us not forget our mother tongue. This was the fear of all our leaders when they introduced the regional medium. The regional medium was introduced many years after independence. They felt that if you learn only English you will forget your mother tongue. So, I would like all of us to remember that each student needs to learn English because it is for their professional life, but each student needs to learn their mother tongue for their personal life. I find people who do not know a word of English calling their parents as mummy and papa. Why can't they call us with the call them by Indian names? What is wrong by saying amma? Amma is such a beautiful word. Why should we say mama or why should we say mummy? This is what is important. Now, many aspects of vocabulary can be learnt if you concentrate on the dictionary. Every day make a habit of reading your dictionary at least one page every day. Whenever you read anything, now you are reading economics, you are reading all your other subjects, you will find that all of them are written in English, I hope if they are written in English then obviously you have to very clearly see the English aspect of it and the subject aspect of it. Just now one of the speakers said that she is reading history, she is reading economics etcetera. So, if these are also written in the language English <coughs> you only pay attention to the economics part of it and not to the English part of it your English will never improve. So, please make it a point to look at the language and the content. Whenever we are reading anything, we should also remember in which language it is written. Is it written in Telugu? Are you reading a book of economics in Telugu? Then your Telugu is becoming better. No harm, we all want to learn Telugu. But 
if you are reading it in English and you are ignoring the English and only reading the concept of economics, that means you are not improving your English. So, to improve English, we need to look at real life situations. Always concentrate on the real life situation, then your English will improve. Two things I have tried to highlight today, that is one of them is grammar, which is very important. Thousands and thousands of students send me emails every day saying, tell us a grammar book. It is no use learning grammar from a book. Then when somebody asks you to speak, somebody asks you to write, you will look at your grammar book. We do not want you to look at your grammar book, you can never speak from a grammar book. To speak a language correctly, you have to practice and practice. Look at how the small child makes so many grammatical mistakes in the use of the mother tongue. We all made mistakes in our own mother tongue. Now we have learnt beautifully our own mother tongue. English also we can learn like that. So, once more if we come back to what I was saying, you know there is the concept of redundancy. If it is shown on your screen, you will be able to see, but otherwise I will tell you that sometimes we use two words where one word is enough. I have given this example by saying, return back this book to the library. What does it mean? It means that the word return and the word back are unnecessary repetition. Either we have to say, give back this book to the library. Give and back are not the same meaning. Or we have to say return this book to the library. Return means to give back. So, we are saying to give back, give back two times. This is redundancy that means extra we are using. In our Indian languages we say cousin brother, cousin sister etcetera. This is redundancy. We can say cousin. Cousin means boy and girl both. We need not specify. Relationships in our languages are very rich, very varied. You know, we have uncle one word in English. We have 10 different relationships in uncle in India. That means Indian relationships are very beautiful. They are very wide. We do not have words for that. So, wherever we do not have words, wherever we want to use words, it becomes an Indianism. Indianism is very good if we are staying in India, but when we go outside India, our students might be going elsewhere to study, our students might be going elsewhere to work. Today it is a global village, so we have to train our students to be able to live anywhere in the whole world. Then we have to learn English without redundancy. Similarly, I have given you know my cousin sister is a doctor, do not say, say my cousin is a doctor. Then I can able to help you tomorrow, can means ability, able means capability. So, the word is repeated, everybody is constantly saying I can able to, I can able to. So, you can say I can help you tomorrow or I shall be able to help you tomorrow can and able mean the same thing. So, either remove can or remove able, in which case the sentence becomes correct. Then we have something called as phrasal verbs in the vocabulary. The phrasal verb is a combination of a verb and a preposition, but they, the combination is not only external. It is not like putting two words together and making the same meaning. The meaning changes completely and that is why we call it as an idiomatic usage. An idiom is a word which has more than its lexical meaning, more than its dictionary meaning. So, here you notice in on your screen, I have used the verb call, the verb call with two different prepositions. So, one of them I can, you can call on him tomorrow. The meaning of call on is to visit. You know, I called on my friend. Many guests call on the vice chancellor. That means visit. The word is visit. You are using a phrasal verb call verb plus on preposition. 
but if you change the preposition you would say call up call up means telephone you know we are all constantly doing that so you can call up tomorrow that means you can make a telephone call similarly the verb broke broke away you know you see it happening in the political parties all the time one party broke away from the other so dissociate broke down means to start crying so by changing the preposition and keeping the verb the same we should always follow the sound and not the spelling okay please remember that english is not a very phonetic language so the sound and the spelling are not the same that is why we have to always follow the spelling i mean the pronunciation and we should not follow the way in which it is spelt so we are spelling university with a vowel but we are pronouncing with a consonant that is why i said a university we are writing honest with a consonant we are pronouncing vowel or that is why we say a uh, honest like that you can write down uh, you know we are saying an honest i'm sure sorry because we are pronouncing the vowel wherever the vowel sound is pronounced please use an you try to say a uh, with a vowel sound you will find it is impossible why the n uh sound is used is because two vowels side by side cannot be pronounced you know we have to break with a consonant that is why we are putting an whereas if a consonant is already there then the word a uh is used so you have to look at the pronunciation we get special pronunciation dictionaries which you can have these days if you go to dictionary.com on your uh, you know cell phone or your computer you can easily get the pronunciation also there is a small mic you press it you will get pronunciation so you can keep listening to the pronunciation pronouncing it yourself checking whether the pronunciation is vowel or consonant and then decide on the article don't go by the spelling